everyone, it's Dr. Rick with Herbal 411 and happy Fibromyalgia Awareness Month. So for those of you who have FMS, uh, hang tight. For those of you who don't know what that is, uh, the American College of Rheumatology. Rheumatology is the, the guys, or doctors, that take care of bones and joints. Rheumatoid arthritis, osteoarthritis. They came up with this diagnosis uh, being a constellation of symptoms. Three of them, sleep abnormality, depression, and trigger points. Trigger points are muscle area tenderness pains. If you have 11 of 18 trigger points specifically to what has been found to be common with FMS patients and then the depression and sleep, you got it. So it's not a bad thing. It gives people hope at least instead of just having to suffer from chronic pain and sleep abnormality. So let's get into it. This time of year a lot of the folks that are considered long haulers, chronic COVID, long COVID, whatever you want to call it, they're suffering from the same crap that fibromyalgia patients in general suffer I from. I think that if you understand the physiology of how suffering occurs or how disease process begins, then you'll be able to attack the disease properly, provide a personal plan to reverse the disease or at least reverse the suffering. It's great with modern medicine because we learn to compartmentalize things, diagnoses, treatment plans, uh, medicines. It's only meant as a guideline. Not everybody, even with the same disease, will present the same way. At least if we have the idea and we go down the possible route of fibromyalgia, there are a couple of layers to unpack that if discovered, will give the patient an option or a means to take control of the suffering. I'm doing a little bit of training and I didn't want to do this in the rain, but it's okay. I have to train for Devil's Lake and then I have to train for Colorado at the end of the summer. It's counterintuitive to get up on a good day or a relaxed day like Sunday and go induce pain or be in the element of nature. But this is why you have to understand that it's worth the investment, as long as you don't flare up too much. I'm gonna dedicate this to my fibromyalgia sufferers, my long haulers, and my chronic fatigue patients. We all suffer from the same thing, and yeah, I'm under control at this point, uh, dialed in, but I'm sure that will change as a fibromyalgia sufferer. And it started in 2005. I've been nursing it, but finding my way. And my way might not be your way, but at least it's a way versus saying you have to be on Cymbalta and painkillers for the rest of your life. So again, it's counterintuitive to get up in the morning when it's time to relax and say, go induce pain or go train, get sweat, get sweaty, get short of breath, have your heart rate go really fast. But if you're on your own and you don't have any training and exercise, you can walk like this, hold yourself accountable to a goal. But the thing with fibro is when you start to move or chronic pain or long haulers, when you start to move, if the energy factories inside each cell are screwed up, that's a mitochondria, then you're gonna think, I wanna move, but your muscles are gonna say, I oh, I can't make any fuel. And that's particularly common with long haulers today, that COVID is also a vascular problem, vascular pulmonary tree, vascular kidneys, vascular brain. You push too hard, you're going to get pushed back from muscles in the form of cramping, total fatigue, or with fibro, a flare-up of your pain, and that's not fun. So most of the time when I hear a fibromyalgia come in, I ask, what do you do for activity? Just to get a gander of how advanced the disease is. Most people will say, I can't because it hurts too much, and that's fair. But what you have to do, just like learning how to train for a marathon, you have to throw a little bit of exercise into your life and then watch and see the muscle response. That's how most coaches decide on what to do for personal planning as far as clients in the gym. It's always important to work on weaknesses uh, before working on strengthening and endurance. And if a client doesn't like the exercises or it's not working for the plan, building shoulders or strengthening core, then your coach is supposed to tweak that a little bit after a couple of attempts and then see if the new formula works. Now with uh, exercise and chronic mitochondrial dysfunction, let's just say that, forget the muscle pain and the sleep disorder and the depression, just with regards to the mechanism of how we're supposed to move muscle, if you can develop a little tolerance to lactic acid, a little bit of activity, then you recover and you try it again. There's something called hormesis where the organism when placed under stress will react to that stressor 
and try to be accommodated so it'll do better when the stressor is next exposed. Now the big question is how does a patient with a mitochondrial dysfunction, whether it's chronic fatigue, long hauler syndrome, or fibromyalgia, how do you actually try to develop or get the mitochondria to work better? How do you get the trigger points to not be as painful? This is how I would do it for my chronic sufferers. Doesn't matter which of the three diseases, but it's important to understand how is the day, what kind of activities can I tolerate now, how's my pain level, how's my sleep. Once you take a snapshot of that, you introduce activity. That's your first ingredient. If I have a chronic sufferer, what I would do would be to template a little bit of a challenge at first to see how much this individual will tolerate. And that is very personalized. Depends on weight, training, uh, disability. So in, in this case, I would at least do, say, five laps back and forth, top of the mountain to the street, and then that's it. And then watch my patient over the next two days. See how bad the fibro or chronic pain or trigger points flare up. And if there's nothing, go harder the next time. If there's way too much suffering, either go easier or extend the amount of time before you exercise again. Or we try to work within the resources of what we have, within the talents of what we have. And that is why it has to be personalized. I appreciate the American College of Rheumatology actually coming up with a definition. And it's good that we recognize this because before everybody would just be pigeonholed into saying you're depressed, take this antidepressant, that's it. So the irony is now that there's a definition, what do all doctors do? They acknowledge it and then they put you back on antidepressants again. Your primary care or rheumatologist may or may not get you to physical therapy. You should always ask, especially if your deductible is low and it's affordable. But fibromyalgia can actually perpetuate a spasm into weeks. So it's important to know what to do with regards to rescue. Standard rescue is rice, rest, ice, compression, and elevation for a joint. For fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue, long haulers, it should be you can experiment by pushing a little bit and you can tolerate the flare up of delayed onset muscle soreness, then good, you go back and do it again. You keep on doing it until you develop a stronger and stronger endurance and a tolerance lactic acid wise. So for chronic sufferers, the first thing is to know your disease process. If you apply stress to a system that's a little bit delicate, you have to know that it's going to really flare up or it'll be good, it'll be fine. For that narrow edge that you'll walk, in case it flares up too much, it's important to have your set of rescues to get you back onto the experiment again. Rescues can be an acupuncture, massage therapy, uh, certain gentle yoga stretches, uh, or prescription medicines can be called on in case your flare-up is way too intolerable. What I like about integrative medicine is that I can do more than just prescription medicines. One of the best rescues I've found for chronic patients to uh, get over or tolerate the flare-up is actually CBD. I've done videos on CBD before, so I'll put them down in the links. But I think at least in Illinois, with the way the plant is being processed, it's one of the strongest rescues you can have without the need for a prescription. So once you have your rescue, once you have plotted out what your attempts are going to be to push the system a little bit, then it's just a matter of working with your sleep and your mood. There's several different things for sleep that will help, whether you need prescription medicine. Uh, Benadryl is not that great because it makes you drowsy, it's unpredictable. You can also take melatonin, especially your COVID sufferers, L-theanine, magnesium at night if it's l 3 skull Skullcap, aromatherapy. There's a bunch of different things that you can apply on your own without a prescription, but you have to have that knowledge base of what to do. Ultimately, you have to have a coach of some sort that's controlling everything and guiding you so that you can compress the morbidity. I learned from one of my teachers, Andy Weil, that compression of morbidity is what we really want to do with The it. idea with integrative medicine is to take that nugget of information that we learn in medical school, residency, fellowship, and another fellowship, and then you pepper in the intelligent use of alternative and complementary therapies so that you can get the patient to successfully summit whatever problem they're trying to take care of faster. Patients can do it on their own because there's a lot of data that you can kind of model after, but there's also a lot of data that's very confusing. And misinformation is so evident now on the internet that you have to be careful about who you follow and how you apply it to your life. Now we can go into a deeper dive at a later time, but if you are a fibromyalgia sufferer or a long hauler, or you have chronic fatigue and you're out of control, please consider consulting me. I can be your coach, give you some ideas. So maybe you and your doctor or your current team will be able to get you to compress your mobility faster. If this helped you, don't forget to hit the thumbs up and uh, go over to my YouTube channel and hit the subscribe button and the alert bell to find out when I do new videos or share this with somebody who you think is suffering. Be active, eat right, get some good sleep, and I'll see you at the next video.